Auto-tune Slice splits sound into sections and then maps those sections chromatically over a MIDI keyboard. The concept of slicing is nothing new. It was developed in the early days of affordable sampling with artists like Africa Bambata, then nurtured by Jay Dilla and other pioneers in the MPC era of sampling. Software in the late 1990s brought this concept of slicing to the masses. Well, things have never been the same. Popular styles recently have made use of vocal slicing. Indeed, there are several products available that take advantage of this trend. Autotune Slice is unique. You might imagine it includes the autotune algorithm for perfect pitch, but it also includes the throat and format models from Autotune Artist and Pro, along with a full modular effects section. It features comprehensive slicing based on transients or musical time divisions, or you can make your own slices on the fly, mapping to a MIDI keyboard as you go. As with other Antares products, there's a lot packed into this plugin, so let's get started. Slice is an instrument plugin, and that's how you'll use it in most DAWs. There's some unique features available to DAWs like Pro Tools, Logic, and Cubase, but we'll cover those later. By default, Slice opens in browse mode, giving you an overview of the most important parts of the plugin, along with a real-time visualizer display. You can see the keyboard, the preset browse area, the effects section, and the autotune section with basic controls. This display can be customized somewhat to focus on your workflow, and the entire plugin can be resized on the fly if you wish by click dragging in the lower right hand corner. The keyboard area displays and accepts key presses to trigger slice playback. Pressing command or control and dragging rearranges slice positions, and we'll get into this in detail when we focus on the keyboard area in edit mode. The sample pack area contains factory and user presets organized by style and use, and in some cases by artist. There's also a way to mark favorites so they come up in their own folder. Each group is listed in the hierarchy with patches displayed on the right. Simply click on a patch to load it. There's no need to even double click. Sample pack releases are now ongoing at Antares with artist specific packs, style packs, and other general sample packs being released periodically as part of an Autotune Unlimited subscription. The effects section is a bank of modular slots for different effects and comes with its own preset patch bank. The first slot is always a doubler, but the other five are fully modular. More on this section in a bit. The Browse window in Slice also includes basic controls for key, scale, and retune speed. And both the effects section and the autotune sections can be turned on and off while in Browse mode. Browse mode is focused on preset selection and playback visuals. It's fun to look at while it does its thing, and it looks great in a session. Edit mode, however, is made for tweaking and customization. You can see some of the same sections that we saw in Browse mode, but everything is expanded. There's also a waveform display with sample slices highlighted. Let me run through basic operation and I'll show you the different parts of the plugin as we go. Slice is, at its heart, a sampler. We therefore need an audio file of some sort to get the engine going. Apart from loading a factory preset, it's easy to drag an audio file onto the GUI and let Slice do its thing. Slice accepts WAVE, AAFF, MP3, and MP4 files and it puts a special copy in your shared files folder with embedded information, so you never have to worry about finding a sample later, even if you drug it in from an external drive. Slice has a way to record audio in from an external source if you want, but implementation varies across your workstations. For example, Pro Tools will allow you to instantiate directly on an audio track and get the audio in that way. Cubase and Logic want to see the sidechain input, but regardless of how you use Slice, it's an important time-saving feature, so let me go through it quickly. Once you've got audio set up and ready to send in, arrange playback from a good point in your track and press record in Slice. A dialog reminds you that existing audio will be removed to make room for the new recording, and it doesn't erase it from your presets or computer, of course, just from this instantiation of the plugin. When the main transport of your DAW is engaged, audio from the track into records the into Slice directly. 
And when you press stop on your DAW transport, the audio in Slice is now standing by, ready for editing. When Slice sees new audio, it senses logical breaks and maps slices across the keyboard accordingly. Slices are determined by transients by default, but you can change this to musical note divisions of any kind. Simply click the edit button, select the time standard you want, whether even, dotted, or a triplet division. The sensitivity control is only applicable in transient mode. It's grayed out in the time division modes, and you don't need sensitivity for eighth notes or sixteenth notes. They are what they are. When you're satisfied with the basic selection, hit reslice for easy divisions. You can always edit and add slices, and we'll go through that shortly. Slice can determine tempo from a well-trimmed audio file, or you can enter the information manually. You can sync to the tempo of your DAW, or force the sample to another tempo for playback. Double and half speed buttons further simplify tempo sync by doubling or halving playback speed accordingly. Tempo sync matters in audio because you want your phrase to start and end in a musical way. Slice moves and adjusts playback speed so that phrases recorded in one tempo will play back accurately and naturally in another. For example, if I play a slice in Pro Tools with the tempo set at 120 BPM, it'll sound like this. The world asleep. But if I set Pro Tools tempo to 40 and turn sync on, it'll sound like this. The world asleep. Turning sync off disconnects the DAW tempo and Slice plays back at the speed indicated in the tempo window. Undo and redo arrows move back and forth through the event buffer in Slice, and Slice will remember up to 99 undo or redo positions. Navigating the waveform area is as intuitive as it gets. Scrolling or swiping up and down zooms in and out, and swiping left and right moves the view area accordingly. Selecting Zoom Slice displays the currently selected slice across the entire waveform display. And then dragging while Zoom Slice is active moves the entire slice. Clicking Zoom Slice once again zooms back out to the full view. Key Select locates and highlights slices as they are played in from the keyboard in the GUI or from MIDI. Using Key Select and Zoom Slice together will speed up editing and help you get perfect boundaries for every slice. In most cases, keys are mapped from left to right sequentially across the display, matching the left to right sequence of the slices themselves. There are some musical considerations where you would want to rearrange slices, but as a general rule, it's left to right sequentially and chromatically across the keyboard display. While the automatic algorithm in Slice does a great job at selecting the start and end boundaries, there will be occasion where you want to customize the start and end points. There are two ways to edit the start point. Either grab the handle up top, or select and hover over a slice until double arrows appear. If you want to adjust the start point of a slice in this manner, simply hover just to the right of the start line. And if you want to alter the end boundary of a previous slice, hover slightly to the left of the end line. And the preceding slice will become highlighted, and double arrows will allow slide editing of the end boundary accordingly. It's easy to add new slices, either to your own sound or to a factory preset. Simply click-drag in the handle area and release when you're satisfied with the length of your slice. It's automatically placed after all the other slices on the piano keyboard, even though the new slice may be in the middle of your sample clip. And you can make up to 127 different slices. They can overlap, they can be in the exact same place if you want, or they can be completely isolated from one another. They will all still be stacked at the end of the keyboard display, and therefore at the end of your MIDI keyboard. To change keyboard allocation, command or control click, and then drag the slice to another position. If there was a slice in the new spot, it swapped with the position of the old slice. And with a bit of reswapping, you can put slices in any order you wish. If you get lost, Remap places everything back like it was before you started rearranging. Use Undo to go back just a few steps if that's what's needed instead. Multiple slices can have different pitches, volumes, or panning. Simply select your slice, either with the mouse or the keyboard, and adjust parameters to taste. 
For example, the same sample slice could be mapped to several adjacent keys for melodic or chromatic playability, and each one of them could have a different pitch or root note assigned. Speaking of chromatic playability, the chromatic button takes the currently selected slice and maps it chromatically across all 127 keys of the keyboard. If a root key is detected, that key displays a capital R to let you know where natural speed playback resides. Selecting slice mode takes the keyboard back to multiple slice playability. The root key display indicates the pitch detected for the selected slice. It's correct most of the time, but if you have a multi-note phrase or if there's an error with pitch detection, you can set this manually so that chromatic slices play back at proper pitches with respect to other instruments. If you don't plan on playing the slice chromatically, the root detection really doesn't matter and can be left wherever it sits. Playback mode determines how slices are played back over time, whether forward or reversed or looped or any of the other nine modes available for playback. It's an important control, so let's go through each one. Forward simply plays the slice normally from the start point to the end point. Reverse plays the slice backwards from the end point to the start point. Forward past end point place each slice from its start point, but continues to the end of the entire clip before it starts. Reverse past start point does the same thing, but in reverse, playing it backwards to the beginning of the sample clip. One shot forward and one shot backward play each slice in a triggered fashion without regard for how long a note is actually held. The amplitude envelope in this case controls playback volume exclusively once the note is triggered, and basically this is like drum pad mode. Loop forward and loop reverse play the sample slice over and over in the selected direction until the key is released. The crossfade control determines the amount of overlapped audio at the loop point. Set it low for more abrupt loops and set it high for smoother loops with a bit of overlapped audio from outside slice boundaries. Crossfade is only active with loop forward or loop reverse modes. Forward to reverse plays the slice forward and upon reaching the end of the slice immediately reverses and plays it backwards. It's kind of like the old fashioned reel rocking on a tape machine. Vary speed is used in chromatic mode to vary slice playback in a way that's more consistent with old school turntables or tape decks. In the old days, if you wanted to raise or lower the pitch of audio, you had to speed it up or slow it down. And in modern times, we're used to a constant playback speed over all the pitches. Slice being the sample powerhouse it is, allows you to use this old school method across the MIDI keyboard if you want to. Simply turn very speed on and it'll link time and pitch like a turntable. <laughs> And turn it off to use the DSP to keep playback speed constant across all pitches. Very speed is turned off by default. Velocity simply controls how slice volume responds to keyboard velocity. Default is 50 and it works well for most samples. Voices determines polyphony, or the number of slices that can be played at the same time, like for chords on a MIDI keyboard, for example. Use lower polyphony if you don't want any overlap when re-triggering samples, and use up to eight voices for playing chords or multiple slices at once. Amp and pitch envelopes are typical ASDR envelopes used in nearly every synthesizer made today. Use these to alter global playback of volume and or pitch. Sync changes the control parameters from absolute time to musical time divisions, so envelopes can move according to tempo if desired. The autotune engine in Slice sits just after the envelope section, and therefore receives audio from pitched slices up and down the MIDI keyboard. 
So like every other version of Autotune, you'll want to match input type, key, and scale to the key and scale of your song. If you're going to use chromatic mode, however, with Slice, set Autotune to chromatic for the best results. Tracking will play a larger role in Slice than in other Autotune versions because Slice will generate audio with chordal or melodic phrases that, frankly, other Autotune versions might not have to deal with. If your signal is sounding choppy or unnecessarily distorted at extreme pitch ranges, increase tracking towards 100 until audio sounds clear again. And if you find the Autotune engine isn't responding like it should, adjust the tracking back towards zero and help Autotune determine pitches more precisely. Retune speed and human eyes are the same in Slice as they are in every other Autotune version, and the controls have been discussed at length in other Autotune training videos, but for a refresher, retune speed deals with how fast Autotune responds to an out-of-tune note. Fast retune speeds and low humanization result in mechanical but immediate tuning. Slower retune speeds and a little more human eyes will result in fluid and gradual pitch changes. Transpose simply takes the whole program up or down the semitone scale. Combining Transpose with Format and Throat gives Slice its unique sound, and indeed it's the basis for many of the presets that I designed for Slice. The DSP is the same as it is in Autotune Pro and Artist, and they're welcome controls here because they help you create one-of-a-kind sounds that no one else has. Format turns on not only the Format DSP, but the Throat parameter. It allows for some otherworldly effects when paired with transpose as well. Check it out. If you want to know more about Format and the DSP behind it, check out our other video on Autotune Pro where I go through these controls in detail. Detune adjusts the pitch of Slice to conform to standard pitch at A440 or any other pitch reference you choose. If your program material seems a little out of tune, simply adjust Detune until it sounds right. Mix is the blend between original signal before the Autotune engine and the Autotune signal. Set it to taste. It can be used to increase or enhance doubling effects when set to around 50%. The power button simply turns the Autotune engine on or off. The effects section in Autotune Slice is a comprehensive multi-modular block that allows any of 13 devices to occupy up to five slots in the engine. Choose from reverb and delay or equalization or any of the other effects. And you can even choose multiples of the same effect if you want for stack delay sounds, for example. The first slot will always be a doubler. It's hardwired into the block and cannot be moved. Each effect can be powered on and off as needed, and in the case of the five modular slots, effects can be dragged or deleted. When an effects module is selected, related controls are displayed here on the right. Each module has its own independent wet-dry control at the bottom of the slot for custom blends. Effects are serial from left to right, meaning one goes into the next, but the wet-dry slider functions as a parallel override for some incredible sounds. The effects engine has its own preset bank, and you can flip through different effects presets without altering slices or other settings. There's even a roll the dice button to choose a random preset and maybe spur some ideas. All controls and settings are stored as a master preset in Slice, and these are found in your user shared files folder, whether you're on a Mac or a PC. Storing and locating these files is handled by the master presets menu up above. There's a roll the dice random preset button here as well. The main volume slide controls output level for the entire plugin. Lastly, there are only a few settings and preferences that we need to be aware of. Important ones include enabling the keyboard and setting the default opening window for when Slice launches. That's Autotune Slice. Thanks for taking a look.